Single people really don't need to hear this advice anymore. This along with the just keep working on yourself. You can make yourself a priority and be working on yourself and simultaneously want a romantic relationship. Like the two are not mutually exclusive. I've been single for 10 years and I've been making myself a priority and working on myself for 10 years. I love my life. I love the freedom my singleness allows me. Hell, this year I traveled to London by myself for an entire month. And I do think it was because I was single that I was able to do that so easily. I didn't have anything tying me down here. And I don't think people who give this advice mean any harm. I think they're actually trying to be helpful. But I can promise you right now, every single person I know has been making themselves a priority and probably will continue to even once they're in a relationship. Alternatively, they will never find a partner because, well, you're the one who's single after 10 years and still believes that you should put yourself first rather than your partner. All right, that makes sense. But not even your relationship. Wow, it's great to see everyone again. Older women cannot pay their bills. Let us begin right away. I am 41 years old and I have absolutely no savings for retirement. I've spent the last 10 or 12 years being a broke single mom and at times living off of food stamps. Any time I've ever gotten ahead financially, I've always had a setback. I've always had a setback. I'm currently like $14,000 in credit card debt and $83,000 in student loan debt. And I don't even have a master's degree. I went to University of Phoenix and got scammed. And I'm hoping to get my University of Phoenix loans forgiven, but that's still pending. Even at that, I still owe $27,000 because I ended up going to a brick and mortar school. So I don't know when I'm ever going to retire. I plan on dying at my cubicle. Is she 41 years old? She appears at least 52. Yet, women require assistance constantly. And they have a sob tale. Always. Always. Therefore, never feel sorry for them while they are having difficulty because help will always arrive quickly. Guys, can you just picture how people's lives would be if it weren't for welfare and all the other social services designed to assist them? Imagine women not receiving food stamps or EBT cards, not receiving alimony or child support, or receiving Section 8 benefits. They would not be able to survive. I am aware that not all women understand. Yes, I do know a few men as well, but not many. By the way, reap those rewards as well. However, women receive those benefits the great majority of the time, roughly 95% of the time, in my opinion. Guys, women need government assistance through social services in order to survive. Remove those services, and I promise you won't hear as many women yelling out loud and proud of their strength and independence. Quick PSA, the monster that you saw at the end of the relationship is who they are. Genuine people remain kind even at the end of relationships. Truly kind, respectful, and genuine people remain that way at the end of relationships because that's their core. That's who you are. You care about the impact you have on others. If there's cruelty and abuse shown at the end of the relationship, that's because the beginning person that you met at the beginning of the relationship, that kind person, that was the manipulation and you're finally meeting the real human being because they no longer could get anything from you. You got to adore these TikTok trainers. Number me alone. Yes, not me either. She is, in my opinion, a non-narcissistic coach. Well, she is, of course, but she's not truly a princess since things change all the time. I apologize if I come across as overly dramatic, but even after dating for a few months and seeing each other for a while, I tend to overreact when a relationship ends. If we've been married for 20 years or more, and you've been taking advantage of me during the divorce, I don't think you should still expect kindness and nice words. It's the 5th of September and I'm literally out of money for the month. I paid my bills, AKA I paid my rent, which leaves me every single month with $600 left over. Next, my car payment. That takes another good chunk. Don't forget car insurance. Oh, also don't forget, I went to the doctor one time. $100 finally got posted today. My electric bill. Electric bills have been going up like crazy. Like my bill used to be $45, it was $93. And then that isn't even me doing food. 
And if you know anything about food prices lately, frozen vegetables cost upwards of $1.50 to $2 a bag. Chicken, two chicken breasts the other day cost me $8. So yeah, it's the fifth of the month. I literally have basically no money left for the month and I'm not sure what to do um, the rest of September. So if you're in the same boat, please comment down below because I'm genuinely curious. Are we all in our 20s basically broke and have no idea how we're supposed to ever save for a house or have money left over in general every month? It's the 5th of September and you're already budgeting like it's the end of the world? Sounds like your wallet's been on a crash diet longer than most New Year's resolutions. But hey, at least you've got a VIP pass to the broke in your 20s club. Did you pay extra for those $8 chicken breasts to come with a side of tears? Maybe it's time to start seeing frozen veggies as the new gold standard. And saving for a house? Let's focus on saving for that next grocery run first. Don't worry, we'll figure out how to turn ramen into a lifestyle. Life in 2024 is a financial emergency. Our groceries are an emergency. Our rent is an emergency. Everything is an emergency. I cannot afford to spend every last penny that I have on my debts because what I really can't afford is to not have a savings account and not have money in my bank account for when I need to pay for things and when emergencies are more than likely going to arise. I have spent so many years of my life paying off my debt, stressing over debt, that now I just I just laugh at. Like somebody commented on one of my videos yesterday about how they spent $12 on grapes. $12 on grapes. Like we live in such a ridiculous timeline that I just no longer can take debt as seriously as I once did. And looking back, I really wish that I could have not spent all of that money on debt. I really just walked myself into more and more debt every single time. Cars breaking down and oral surgeries, I have been there. And then it just like is a catalyst for more and more debt. No more, no more. The debt for right now during this crazy timeline is getting the minimum payments so that I have as much as I need in my spending account for all of the crazy emergencies that are happening on a daily basis at this point. Ladies, I've noticed something about them. It's almost as if every uncomfortable or inconvenient situation becomes an emergency to them. Let me explain. They plan poorly or not at all, and then at the last minute they freak out and everything becomes an emergency. Women are very chaotic by nature, so chaos is always a part of their lives and always runs in the background like bad software on a computer. The only two things that women know how to properly plan for are their wedding and their girl's trip. Don't let the beautiful smile, the big booty, or the gorgeous eyes fool you. And what they call an emergency is usually the result of bad planning or no planning at all. Men do not know how lucky they are when a girl actually likes them. Like, do you know how many unanswered texts I have in my phone from men who I take literal days, if not weeks, to respond to? Do you know that the fact I'm responding to you the same business day is a privilege? I don't think they do. I don't think they know. I don't think they care. I know I don't. And I would never care about someone who's so arrogant and so entitled to my time that she thinks I need to be on my phone every single day, every single second of the day, because she might respond to me now. Princess, you respond to me in one business day. I'm going to make sure that on that day, I'm going to call in sick, and you're not even using your own ideas and your own words. You're just copying from each other. And this is what you chose to copy. I may not have 100 daily DMs, but I can still make myself interesting to someone else. And even if I didn't, I can still share my time with my friends and my family waiting for you to reply. It's not on my to-do list. Me to repo my car. So I am repoing my own car because I am now thinking of my exit strategy. The life that I'm living now, it just goes from like work, stress, not happy, not fulfillment. And just that shock with thinking that I violated my probation and I was going back to prison. It just gave me a new perspective on life. So I am thinking about my exit strategy from everything. Like the situation currently that I feel that I've put myself in since I've gotten out of prison. It's just time for a whole exit strategy right and i feel like the first step to an exit strategy is to downgrade my expenses and can i afford my car the no part where i can't afford it is because why spend this much money when i don't have to so let's go to kia because i am so humbled to be in this car like it's still a blessing and don't don't get it twisted like i'm not saying i'm not blessed because this car is still a blessing boy the fake hair and the fluffy eyelashes let me get this straight. 
as part of your exit strategy from life's stressors, prison flashbacks, and high car payments, you're repossessing your own vehicle? Who knew that the first step to enlightenment was downgrading your car? That's some seriously advanced self-awareness. You're out here swapping your ride like it's going to solve the whole life crisis situation. I respect the hustle, but maybe next time try downgrading the drama first before the car. At this rate, your departure strategy is going to need a GPS just to keep up. If you like the show, click the like button to let other people know. Click the bell to be notified when I add new shots. I appreciate everything you've done. Immediately do something. Check out more videos of people hitting walls by clicking here again.